Hey guys and girls, welcome back to Let's Play Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. Um, we just finished a pretty big thing here going on. Um, a speller, uh, where we left off, a speller had went missing. Um, one second, guys. Uh, only to find out that she has been accused of being a witch, I believe. Leaving a spella captured, and a, and uh, the young uh, quote unquote Baker Phoenix Wright has been requested by a spella to I guess represent her in court. Let's check it out and see what happens from there. We don't want no fuss and we don't want to hurt you, all right? Yeah, we just want your money, that's all. And you'll give it to us, won't you, without any fuss? <laughs> oh, God! So she, she is a witch? So they were trying to hurt her and she was bringing the milk back. Use their powers to burn them to death. Wow. Phoenix is gonna have a hard time with this one. The Fire Witch. What? What? What is this place? The room is lit, but it's still somehow dark, and the atmosphere feels heavy. Nick! What are we doing in a place like this? How should I know? We're just a couple of bakers, but I don't think they brought us here to make bread. Yikes. Is it me, or is that guard star staring daggers at us right now? This, this waiting room is so, like, de demonically medieval-looking. Yikes, is it me? Or is that guard staring daggers at us right now? Mr. Wright, Maya! Oh, no, it's her. Uh, Spella, what exactly is going on? I'm sorry. I was the one who sent for you both. You sent for us? I, I'm being put on trial. Well, wait, what? What happened? I don't know. I just don't understand what's going on. I didn't do anything wrong. I couldn't possibly murder anyone. M murder I beg you, Mr. Wright, please. I need your help. Just one more time. Huh? You need my help? What could I possibly do? Spella, I'm just a baker. The only thing I know about law is how not to get on the wrong side of it. Come on, you gotta remember. Wait, hold on a sec. Spella, what did you just say? You said you needed Nick's help just one more time. One more time? I'm not quite sure myself, but when the knights came and took me, a vision suddenly appeared in my mind. It was Mr. Wright. Ah. He was fighting for me, defending me. That brave blue figure. It was clear as day. Damn. <laughs> I was fighting for you? No way! That's impossible! I mean, it's like I already said. I'm just a baker. I have a hard enough time rolling dough, let alone defending someone in court. I thought the same thing too, at first, but I don't think that's quite true. You and Maya at some time, somewhere. You helped me. You fought for me as a defender. A defender? What's wrong, Nick? I wish I knew, Maya. But hearing a spell mention a 
Defender. I can't help but feel something inside of me just burning at the mention of it. Accused, Defender. It is time. Head forth, you two. Head forth? Um, where are we going exactly? To the courtroom in which today's trial will be taking place, the Chamber of Fire. Ch chamber of Fire? Make haste. If you are but a moment late, a guilty verdict will be delivered immediately. But, uh, no way. Mr. Wright. I am truly sorry, Mr. Wright. I know this is all so sudden. It's a lot. It's a lost cause, isn't it? Well, then. Let's head inside, Isabella. Huh? This overwhelming pressure. It feels so familiar somehow. Almost like deja vu. M Mr. Wright. Let's go, Maya. Maybe we'll get a better idea once the trial gets underway. Uh, all right, let's do it, Nick. Let's do it. To it, Nick. <laughs> uh, uh, so did the, the, the creators writing them into the story maybe made him lose What is this heat? Of... It's like an oven in here. I will now pronounce the verdict. This court finds the accused guilty of being a witch. No! I'm not a witch! Please! Please, I beg you to read the story! Please, it's not! Witches are to be caught straight into the world! This is oh God. The, the witch's court. This is gonna be a tough one, Nick. <laughs> Who are we going against? So, how are you feeling, Nick? I'd forgotten what this felt like up until now. Huh? Huh? The butterflies in my stomach. The tension so thick you could slice it with a knife. All of these feelings. These are all feelings that I'm definitely familiar with. Anyway. We're here to fight for Espella. And get her out of this place. That's right. <laughs> the court is now in session for the trial of Espella Cantabella. Defender. Yes, Your Honor? Yours is a face I've not seen in any past trials. But no matter. Start by stating your name, Defender. Yes, Your Honor. Uh oh. <laughs> My name is Phoenix Wright, Ace Baker. <laughs> A baker? <laughs> I asked him to come, my lord. I want him to represent me. This court dictates that the accused is free to assign a defender of their choosing, my lord. Hmm, very well. At any rate, the result of this trial shall not change. That aside, I've not yet seen hide nor hair of the Inquisitor assigned to this trial. Inquisitor? Oh, right. I should have noticed earlier. No one's there. Should the assigned Inquisitor fail to appear in court, I will have no choice but to dismiss all oh, charges. That's a lucky break. He is an inquisitor of high caliber, but if he does not come forward soon, this trial will end, and victory will then be declared in favor of this baker. <laughs> it's the old judge, too, which I like. Because, um, it was a new dude in the English court. This is, is, this is the old judge, our old beardo, our old friend from the old game. Hold it! Uh oh. This is Barnum, isn't it? I knew it! Inquisitor Barnum. Regal and stuff. I have but one question for you both. 
Are you prepared to cross swords? I, Inquisitor Zacharias Barnum, am indeed prepared to do battle, my lord. <laughs> Something amiss, Baker? Sorry, Your Honor, I just didn't realize we could have swords here in the courtroom. It is the way of the court knight. A knight must always ensure that he rides with a blade at his side. Now then, state your name, Sir Blue Knight. Sir Blue Knight? Uh-huh. My name's Phoenix Wright. I'm a baker. How many times will you make me say it? A baker? Nick, quit with the long face. You look miserable. I know. Try and act like you're professional. No need to waste your breath. This trial will be over before you can utter a single objection. Bring For it. the security of all of Labyrinthia, my blade shall rend your defenses swiftly and without mercy. That's it, Barnum. Put another one out of their misery. This trial is pointless. Hand down the verdict already. Put that doughy defender on trial too, I say. Really? <laughs> Maya's face though, and Nick's. Oh boy. What's with all this excitement? You'd hardly think this was a courtroom. The crowd doesn't seem very interested in law, that's for sure. It's like they're all just hoping for a guilty verdict. Inquisitor Barnum, you may begin your opening statement. As you wish, my lord. First, let us begin by recounting the events leading up to the murder. Is that acceptable, Sir Apprentice Baker? Uh, as you wish. The murder occurred this very evening. Yesterday, there was heavy, heavy rainfall in the area. Eventually, it gave way to sunshine, which came just in time for today's parade. Although a few hours after the parade ended, the rain set in once more. That must have been when Espella and the others were at the Great Archive. It continued to rain until just before the incident which took place on a small path leading to the market. The accused had been out doing some shopping at the market. She returned home on that very same path. And on that forest path, two rogues named Robs and Mugs are said to have accosted the accused. One could assume the accused simply acted in self-defense. I see. Robs and Mugs, those two have appeared in court a number of times in the past. Two rogues, huh? So far, it may appear that the accused was more than the victim. However, the situation soon changed. That's right. The accused, Espella Cantabella, knowingly and mercilessly murdered her two assailants. Cantabella. That girl, isn't she? I always knew she looked suspicious. Shh, not so loud. Yikes. There's that weird excitement again. I believe we now fully grasp what happened. It is getting late already. Let us begin the trial. Inquisitor Barnum, you may now begin. As you wish, my lord. The Inquisition will now hear eyewitness testimony regarding the night of the murder. Eyewitness testimony, huh? It looks like this trial is finally getting underway. I can't back down now. I have to fight. But I'm just a simple bread-making baker. Living a simple bread-making life. The situation is more twisted than a pretzel, and I'm smacked in the middle of it. But I have to do this to save Espella. Okay, let's see if I can untwist this testimony and put this thing to bed. Who could have seen it, I wonder? Oh. Um. Hey, Mary, and, uh, what? All of them? Allow me to welcome you all. Now, would you eat... Would each of you please state your name and occupation? Hold it! Well, wait a minute. Well, what's going on here? As I already explained, Sir Apprentice Speaker, this is the eyewitness testimony. Of like five people, though, that's new. Yes, I understand that, but there are four witnesses. 
Indeed. This many people inside the courtroom could pose a health and safety issue. Your Honor, that's uh, not quite what I meant. Witness testimonies are supposed to be done one by one, as in one witness at a time. What are you talking about, child? Why'd be, we'd be here all night if we did that. That's right, young man. We have witnessed the very hand of fate reach out to us this evening. Um, could we hurry this along, perhaps? These flowers won't sell themselves as much as my boss wishes they would. Nightly. <laughs> Path to knighthood is an arduous one, but I remain steadfast in my resolve as I travel down this long road. <laughs> I get his wiggly sword. I shall not falter. I will be victorious. Who cares? Just question them all at once. We already know the girl on the cage did it. Let's get on with it. Yeah, I finished this already. I'd like to go back home and get to bed. Good. <laughs> Witness. Witnesses. Again, state your names and occupations. I'm known as Wardsmith, but what is a name? How doth one describe an occupation like the bubbling of a babbling brook? I flow gracefully around the rocks and debris that is life, nary a worry in my mind. Right, so I guess that means he's jobless. My name is Mary, and this darling kid is Snowy. <laughs> Say me. Snowy and I often travel to the edge of town to sell delicious fresh milk. Milk like that doesn't happen overnight. I work my hands to the bone, squeezing each drop out, literally. That sounds pretty frightening. I'm Kira. I'm a flower seller. If you would all be so kind, feel free to purchase one of my beautiful flowers at any time during the trial. There's no way I'll sell them all by morning. Oh, the life of a flower girl is so hard. Yeesh, talk about a hard sell. My name is Knightley. I aim to join our town's order of knights. I study night and day, though I am still but a mere squire. Join in the knights of the Inquisition of my life's ambition, and I, Knightley, will do whatever necessary to join. So, he's jobless too. Honorable witnesses, I ask that you show this court your best when delivering your testimonies. Now, tell us what exactly you saw on this ill-fated eve. Uh, this is gonna be new. So we're just gonna start with one by one as all of them are here. What we saw tonight. The delicious scent of mid-evening dinner permeated the air and a soft light shone faintly in the distance. Muggs grabbed the girl by the arm. It looked like he almost pushed her to the ground. I heard a faint voice cry out. The next moment, those two villainous men burst into flames. There was not a trace of fire to be seen in the area. Thought I doubt magic must have been used. M magic Sir Apprentice Baker, you may now begin your interrogation. I have but one piece of advice. I suggest you pay it heed. Do not waste the court's time by grilling these witnesses over irrelevant nonsense, Sir Apprentice Baker. Are you right, Nick? They sure love calling you an apprentice baker, huh? I'll be honest with you, Maya. I have no idea how I'm feeling right now, but I know it's all up to me as her defender. The spellless fate is in my hands. I have to believe in her, and I need to start believing in myself. I can do this. I believe a spell is innocent, and I'll fight until the end to prove it. Yeah, that's the spirit. We can do this thing, Nick. <laughs> Alright. Cross-examination. Bring it on! Okay, what we saw. The delicious scent of mid-evening dinner permeated the air and a soft light shone faintly in the distance. What do I have uh, to present wise? The case outline. The use of witchcraft to burn two male victims alive. I don't really have nothing. Mugs grabbed the girl by the arm. It looked like he almost pushed her to the ground. I heard a faint voice cry out. The next moment, those two villainous men burst into flames. There was not a trace of fire to be seen in the area. Without a doubt, magic must have been used. Hold it! Uh, isn't it a bit premature to assume it was magic? What an absurd statement. Say what? 
Think about it. The knaves were engulfed in flames, and the blink of an eye, the blink of an eye. There was not a single trace of any other fire source to be found in the area. Not a trace. Therefore, there is only one true explanation as to what caused that inferno. And what would that be? Let me guess. Magic, right? There's no crime in simply not knowing, but refusing to accept the plain truth. There lies the true crime, Sir Apprentice Baker. That is quite the crime indeed, Defender. It, anyway, it doesn't matter. I just have to find a contradiction in this testimony. No way, a spell out can't be a witch. Looks like that's it for the tes their testimonies. Nick, are you feeling okay? You've never cross-examined anyone before. Up until now, my life has been about all about baking. Kneading dough, rolling it, baking it, day after day, the same thing. This trial isn't any different from baking. These witnesses, they're all just kind of like fresh dough. It's a job to roll out the contradictions and bake their testimony into something this court can stomach. If a speller is innocent, then there has to be a contradiction somewhere in these testimonies. And when I find it, I'm really gonna crank up the heat. First things first, I've gotta gather as much information as possible. Alright, let's just press them all then. For Hold now. it! I don't really see clear contradictions in this. Um, what time would that be exactly? Dinner time. When else would the scent of dinner be in the air, if not dinner time? Person? Not so much. The sun has already set by that time. The sun had already set? Um, so you clearly witnessed what happened tonight, is that correct? I have been dubbed a witness, thus I must clearly have witnessed something, do you see? In that case, how much light was there in the immediate area at the time? Enough to see the nose on my face. But not enough to see the trees ahead, do you see? N no no uh, that doesn't add up. If the area was completely dark, then you couldn't possibly have witnessed anything. Do you see? Nevertheless, something caught my eye. It was the most ominous sight. Ominous is what that sight was. Uh okay, I get it. It was ominous. Objection! Poor form, Sir Apprentice Baker. I hate to disappoint you, but there was, in fact, light in the area. Huh? Take a look at this. This is a drawing of the crime scene based on the witness's account. As penned by the court illustrator. The court illustrator? I've never heard of that before. But <laughs> well, they don't got cameras in one this time. Look carefully. This shows what the scene looked like at the time of the murder. Illustration of the highest quality as always. Now then, we have established that by the time the murder occurred, the sun had already set. Because of her uh, lamp thing, her torch. And so naturally, the defendant was carrying a fire lit lantern, as we can see. A, a lantern? Eureka! Indeed, yes, that is what I was saying earlier. There was a lantern. A lantern, I say. Oh, please, you totally forgot. To be honest, I did not imagine it would be necessary to present this, but... My lord, here is the lantern in question. This is what was responsible for the light illuminating the area. Very well. The court accepts this into evidence. Speaking of which, Inquisitor Barnum in this drawing. The accused seems to be holding a milk bucket of sort. What became of this? It's a strange case indeed, my lord. That bucket seemingly disappeared from the murder scene. The milk bucket disappeared, you say? There has been talk of wolves living in the nearby forest. It is thought they often make off with the items they find on the ground. Great. Wolves that steal your stuff. Mind me to never set foot in that forest. This is great, Nick. We've got new evidence now. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. You know, Nick, you really don't look like just some normal run-of-the-mill run baker. 
I'd say you're more like a somewhat articulate, run-of-the-mill baker. <laughs> I think you might even have a knack for being a defender. There's a clear contradiction somewhere in that testimony, and I'm going to find it. Monkey grabbed the girl by the arm. It looked like he almost pushed her to the ground. Which one was Muggs? Robs and Muggs. Would it be from left to right? Because at least by this. No, not that. Uh, by the. Uh... Oh, they didn't give me the map thing? What? Let's just put Hold the pressure it. on it. Muggs was one of the two rogues, is that correct? That's right. That man, he grabbed the girl's arm and pulled out a knife. It, is something wrong? Or was it Robs that grabbed the girl and had the knife? Huh? Oh dear. Now let's see. Muggs was the short one. And Robs was the... No, no. I think it was the other... Way around. <laughs> She's not credible. <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter which was which now, does it? Help me. <laughs> That's all well and good, but I was kind of just hoping you'd testify about the lantern. Honorable witnesses, please continue with your testimonies. I heard a faint voice cry out the next moment those two villainous men burst into flames. Hold it! Exactly whose cry did you hear? Well, it was the accused. It was Espella's voice, of course. And did you get a good look at Miss Cantabella's face? Yes. I mean, she was carrying that huge lantern after all. You're only sure because all the other witnesses just finished saying they saw her with the lantern? <laughs> There's something here. Oh no, I didn't mean to press her again. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. I wanna skip it. Skip it. Yeah, whatever, lady. There was not a trace of fire to be seen in the area without a doubt. I think it's on him. Because this lantern is in the area. So how can it not be a trace? What is the matter, Defender? <laughs> He's remembering, I think. That's his, his trademark. <laughs> what is this is feeling? I just felt the urge to shout out right from the bottom of my lungs while pointing my finger. Oh God, am I going crazy? <laughs> Objection! I can't help but feel that's a word used quite a bit in the past. That's it. I remember now. I remember everything. <laughs> the Legal League of Attorneys exchange, a spell trial, and then that strange book. <laughs> this feeling. I feel like I can take on the world. Witness! <laughs> Uh-oh. He's back. What's with the sudden pointing? I, I must soon be a member of the Honorable Knights of the Inquisition. I accept your challenge, how about you? You say that no fire was present at the scene of the crime. Meaning the defendant must have used magic. Unfortunately for you, that is not the case. What do you mean, Sir Apprentice Baker? What I mean is that the defendant was in fact carrying a lantern, a lantern containing fire.
Those two rogues were actually burned by the flames that was inside that lantern. That is the only logical explanation. My, what a startling conclusion you've come to, Sir Princess Baker. What do you mean? The only logical explanation. Do you agree with this statement, honorable witnesses? It is presumptuous for a man that knows nothing to claim that he knows something about which he really knows nothing. Huh? Besides, how could one teeny tiny flame be strong enough to set them both ablaze like that? Ugh. There were two of them. How could that flame engulf them so fast? Uh. <laughs> furthermore. If they did burn, as you claim, they did do, you mean. To suggest that they were soaked in oil or something. Oh, uh. Well, so, Blue Knight, it would seem you have bitten off more than you can chew. Ah! I definitely didn't see that coming. What say you, my lord? Do you have any thoughts on the proceedings thus far? Given the testimony as we have heard it, the, this court has come to its conclusion. It was a truly gruesome and merciless act, an act for which only one thing could be held responsible. The nefarious crime of magic. No! Hold it! Wait, wait just a second. Is there something you have forgotten to mention before? Not exactly, Your Honor. It's just that... I mean, you just said magic. That can't be right, can it? What are you suggesting, Sir Princess Baker? Witches use magic, which in turn brings about disaster. Such is the way of this world, is it not? Well, yeah, that may seem to be the case. But no way is that actually possible. This court finds a spell of Cantabella, the accused charged with being a witch. A spell of a witch? A witch's existence in this world is a crime in itself. The ability to use and control magic is a criminal offense indeed. As such, any witch found practicing magic will be sentenced to death by fire. No, no you're wrong. I'm not a witch. Sir Princess Pig, I do not envy your current predicament. My lord. Hand down your guilty verdict against this witch immediately. Objection! But... There's no evidence to prove that any magic was really used. Put a sock in it, bread boy. We all heard her cast a spell. Huh? <laughs> That's right. Snowy and I heard it. Isn't that right, precious? Nothing! Hey, oh God, you do die. I can't break. You heard that incantation quite clearly. Uh. That frightening voice, there's no mistaking it. It was a speller's voice. Uh. These ears do not lie. I clearly heard an incantation most sinister. Ignaze, it went. Incantation. Ignaze? It's no good. I just can't wrap my head around this topsy turvy otherworldly port. <laughs> Well then, it would seem the defense has no further objections. It appears so. Give me a second, guys. Because I can't wrap my head around uh, Phoenix possibly losing right now.
The court finds the use of magic at the time of the murder to be an undeniable fact. Furthermore, the honorable witnesses have stated that they each heard the incantation. 